What's up, my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, your favorite or least favorite English teacher, depending on your perspective of the world. And today we are here with some more English teacher time. On this channel, just a couple months ago, I reviewed a book by Matt Walsh called What is a Woman? Throughout that book, he frequently asked what a woman was and was very upset when a lot of people could not define the word woman. Throughout this book, he also talked about a part of speech known as pronouns. Throughout the book, he often talked about pronouns being something biological rather than something linguistic. He talked about grammatical correctness and accuracy without really knowing what those things meant. So after a while, it hit me. A lot of people have been asking things like, what is a woman? What is a man? What is a human? What is an assault rifle? All of those type of things, but very rarely do I hear people actually asking, what is a pronoun? And at first I thought it was because it was a question a lot of people didn't need to ask. We all learned what pronouns were in our English classes, right? We learned them when we learned about verbs and when we learned about adjectives and when we learned about parts of speech. I know some of these words and how to linguistically break down a sentence into those parts of speech, how those parts of speech function and things like that. We all learned that, right? Well, I'm starting to wonder if maybe some people actually didn't. And when I say that, I don't say that with judgment. I say that in a sense that I'm like, well, a lot of people sometimes come into my comments and say, Savvy, I love when you break down things from a grammar perspective, or I love when you break down things from your perspective as an editor or as someone who has worked as an English teacher and things like that. Please do more of that. So today, since there are a lot of people out there who seem to actually not know what a pronoun is, welcome to today's topic, what is a pronoun? Hit you some nuts. Yeah, you effin'. Up yours, woke moralist. We'll see who cancels who. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome for the first time. I'm Savvy, and this is Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where one of my favorite things to do when I review books is to break down some of the sentence structure of them, look at things on the sentence level, do a very close reading, and break down how the actual writing of something itself can function towards the overall goal of what the person is trying to say. And because of that, I hear a lot of arguments that people make all the time about, oh, we need to put academic achievement at the forefront. We need to put being correct at the forefront. It's not about being politically correct, it's about being actually correct. Only for someone to follow it up with something that is not actually correct. So we're gonna break that all down today and talk a little bit about what pronouns are, how people have been using them wrong, and we're just having English teacher savvy today. You guys get English teacher savvy today. Hope you were excited about that. It will test your head and your mind and your brain too. But before we get too into it, please don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in videos about books and business. I put out videos multiple times a week. And in addition to that, if you like some of the stuff that I talk about and want to see more of the behind the scenes of that, you can also check out my Patreon page. By the way, today's video was brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Their names are up on the screen. And if you take a look in the description below, you will see where I link my Patreon supporters who support with $5 a month or up. I give them the option to link their own small business or social media page or whatever they like as well. Thank you so much much to all of my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in joining my Patreon page, you will also get additional blog posts once to twice per week, which have things like Q&As, abilities to vote on polls, things like that, and then also behind the scenes looks at what I'm doing as a writer, what I'm doing as a business owner, how my process works, blog posts with reflections. Oh, and recently I've been doing a lot of sneak peeks of new books that I have coming out because I decided on a release date for my next nonfiction book, Conversations with My Puppet. It's coming out July 25th. So there have been some sneak peeks of there on my Patreon as well as sneak peeks of other books. Anyway, that's all linked in the description below. You can check it out. And with that in mind, let's talk about what is a pronoun. So I saw this Twitter account, this tweet right here from someone who their username appears to just be a cross. So I think that perhaps they are Christian. That would check out. And this person says, after a lot of confusion, I now identify with the following pronouns. Forgiven, redeemed, sanctified, purified, chosen, set apart, righteous, holy, godly, overcomer, and believer worshiper. I would appreciate if you all address me as such that old identity is dead and gone. So this person, I guess, is someone who used to be on OnlyFans and is now a Christian. We're on a mission from God. Which like, okay, if you're someone who, you know, you, you convert to a different religion later in life, all of that's good. I'm not here to comment on this person's life, their religions, their choice of occupation, none of that. I am here today solely to comment on the parts of speech. Because not only are none of these words pronouns, 
but none of them are even the same parts of speech. So for example, forgiven, redeemed, sanctified, purified, chosen, set apart, those are all passive participle verbs. A lot of them are in, pa some of them are in past perfect tense, like forgiven. You might say that something had been forgiven, that would be past perfect tense, or I guess for present perfect, you could say have been forgiven. But in either case, it's going to be a passive participle form because you would be like forgiven by whom it implies that the subject is going to be addressed afterwards. And we won't get too deep into that, but my whole point here is those are passive participle verb forms, but then when we have righteous and holy, those are adjectives. Godly and overcomer are, that's an adjective and a noun. So none of these words are pronouns whatsoever, right? All of these words are just completely various parts of speech that are being used in this context. And this made me really realize that I think a lot of people are looking at the concept of pronouns as something that is inherently linked to gender or sex or LGBTQ topics or genitalia or masculinity or femininity and things like that. When that has absolutely fuck all to do with what a pronoun is. A pronoun is a part of speech. So first, let me give you a little definition. We will go into some examples of people using pronouns wrong. Then we will go into some examples of pronouns in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna look at pronouns in the Bible. <laughs> and then we will wrap up with what we've learned in English class today, okay? A pronoun functions as a noun or noun phrase would function within a sentence, but it is a word that is used as a stand-in for that noun that can then refer back to that noun or noun phrase, which has been established elsewhere, either in the sentence or in a nearby adjacent sentence that you could refer to for context. We call the noun sentences that are referred to with pronouns an antecedent. If someone were to say like, savvy, take out the trash, and I were to say, I don't want to do it. The it there is a pronoun referring to taking out the trash, which the gerund form of taking out the trash in that case, it is taking the entire command, putting it into a noun phrase sense, referring back to it. That is the it there. Does that make sense? So pronouns are words like I, me, you, he, she, it, him, her, they, we, are, yours. There's a bunch of words like that. Actually, recently there's been some debate among editors, English teachers, style guides, things like that surrounding whether the words this and that are pronouns or if they're adjectives. And I have had both editors and English teachers look at those words in different ways. Usually I err on the side of using this and that as adjectives when I'm editing something in Chicago Manual of Style, but there are some people that can use them in everyday conversation in a pronoun form and it still makes sense. One thing we have to keep in mind whenever we talk about language is that language is going to evolve over time based on how it's used. If you want to look back a couple centuries, you couldn't use the word you as a singular pronoun back then. You had to use the word you as a plural pronoun. So you, the way we say y'all now, you, it could be singular or plural. We could say all of you, or we could say just you pointing to you. But back in the day, you would have had to have said thou if you meant just one person instead of all these people. Thou come. So it's important to keep in mind as we go through this that language doesn't have these hard defined rules that stay in one place over time. This is the thing that I brought up when I talked about Matt Walsh and his book What is a Woman? That language is descriptive rather than prescriptive, which is that language is a tool we use to communicate the best way we can possibly transmit the ideas into our head into someone else's head in the clearest way possible. Really? 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 And when we do that, it's because those are the things that people have evolved to understand as those things. I understand nothing rather than the things that someone has dictated are the rules of the language and therefore must be followed. That's why we have different languages throughout the world because in different geographic locations, different groups of people have evolved to say things differently within their own cultures and their own dialects. Does that make sense? Hope so. Anyway, back to what a pronoun is. So there's some debate regarding whether the words this and that are a pronoun or if they're adjectives, right? So for example, if I were to say something like, my dog's behavior has been bad lately. This is upsetting to me. In that case, a lot of people might say that and that might sound completely normal because you're using this in that sense as a pronoun. You're using the word this to refer to the antecedent of my dog's behavior, which I'm saying is bad, and then I'm going on to say this is upsetting to me. Now, a lot of people, when editing in certain style guides, may say that it is unprofessional or incorrect to say that type of sentence. I personally don't find it universally incorrect because depending on context, that sentence makes perfect sense to a lot of people, and if what you're saying is making sense to someone else, then language is functioning as it should. However, if you are following a specific style guide, and that specific style guide says that the word this is not to function as a pronoun, but is to function as an adjective, then in that case, you could say something like, 
my dog's behavior has been bad lately. Hi, doggy. This development is upsetting to me. This change in behavior is upsetting to me. Basically, if you're going to use it as an adjective, you would have to add a noun phrase to modify it with. Otherwise, someone would consider that sentence not to have a complete subject because if they're saying that this and that cannot function as pronouns and can only function as adjectives, then your sentence technically didn't have a noun phrase in it. That's another issue where there is a debate about pronouns. Now, keep in mind that out of everything I've said so far, the debates that are happening about pronouns versus adjectives versus how things function in sentences, none of that has had anything to do with gender roles or genitalia or chromosomes or anything like that. Boy, that escalated quickly. I think there's been a really strange misconception lately that when someone talks about pronouns that they're not talking about a part of speech, but are rather talking about something related to sex, gender, or presentation thereof. Now, I will say that you can't fully divorce those concepts entirely for this reason. A lot of language has linguistic gender built into it. If you look at languages like Spanish or French, for example, you have linguistic genders built into inanimate objects. When you look at a lot of words in Spanish, those words will be coded as masculine or feminine, even if that word is to describe an object that has no sex characteristics whatsoever. A word like food, la comida, that's feminine in Spanish. But in Polish, you've got to jedzenia, which is neutral and not masculine or feminine. But then you've got mug. Oh, this, I was about to say mug in Polish. This mug is actually from a Polish market. That's kind of fun. Mug in Polish is kubek, which is masculine. Why is that masculine? This mug doesn't have a dick. That's a penis. My point is that there's a difference between linguistic gender and the gender that we often associate with sex characteristics. And that's not to say that those genders don't all come from the same place, which is the idea of categorization and making something into a genre, which is kind of the root of where gender comes from as a concept is from genre. So it's about categorization. It's about genrefying things and things like that. So when you get into those elements of categorization, the idea of gendered pronouns in English, things like he or she, him or her, things like that, that comes from the concept of linguistic gender. In another language where all nouns are gendered, you would refer to something with a masculine or feminine article as well before it. Like in Spanish, you would say la comida. You wouldn't say el comida because el is a masculine form of the word the, whereas la is the feminine form of the word the. So there is a level of gender that is built into language and into linguistics, and that absolutely reflects in English as well as English has evolved from a variety of other languages. Also, languages all kind of influence each other in that way, so it can be kind of interesting. Oh, by the way, before I go on about this, highly recommend you read the book Word Slut by Amanda Montell if you haven't already. She goes into all this as well, and she is a professional linguist, and I think her perspective on all of this is so interesting. So if you're a linguistic nerd too, go ahead, make sure you read that book, okay? My point with all of this is I think a lot of people have taken the word pronoun away from meaning what it usually means, which is a part of speech that is a stand-in for a noun, and it has always meant that and probably always will continue to mean that. Hey, but Savvy, didn't you say a few minutes ago that language evolved, so if people use pronouns to mean a reference to genitalia, doesn't that mean that's what it's gonna mean? I mean, it might mean that within small circles of people who say those things on the internet, but the majority of people would not understand it in that sense. I guess my argument here kind of comes from the idea that a lot of people will claim on the one hand they care about being grammatically correct and they care about having high academic achievement and oh you can't use they and them as a singular because that's not grammatically correct. Well according to Chicago Manual of Style edition 17 yes it is. Anyway let's take a look at some more of this. So again those parts of speech were not pronouns that she listed. Clear troll post. Now let's take a look at one of the most iconic versions of this misconception in a long time. Laverne Spicer tweeting, there are no pronouns in the constitution. There are no pronouns in the constitution. Let's fact check that real quick. Let's see if that's true. Let's pull up from constitutioncenter.org the entire text of the US constitution. All right, let's, let's start the constitution over here. Here we go, United States constitution, we the people. Well, uh, Laverne, I found one already. The Constitution starts with a pro- You mean there are no pronouns in the Constitution? It literally starts with a pronoun. What kind of word do you think we is? Well, let's take a look really quick here. Okay, who does we refer to? We refers to the people of the United States. It's almost like it's all right there, first thing you see in it. We, the people of the United States. The people of the United States is the antecedent being referred to by the pronoun we. Oh my goodness! The word the 
constitution starts with a pronoun. Let's just take a look at how many pronouns are just in the preamble. We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. Okay, all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Ourselves, our posterity. There are no pronouns in the constitution. That's hilarious. Tell me you don't know what a pronoun is without telling me you don't know what a pronoun is. Here's a tweet from a guy named Benny Johnson who says, using pronouns is anti-Christian. Do not use them. Does anyone want to tell me what kind of word them is? Do not use them. Do not use what? If them is the noun, then I don't know what them is referring to. But if them could be a pronoun, then perhaps them refers to pronouns. The word pronouns is in itself a noun. And then them is a pronoun referring to the word pronouns. But okay, Benny. God created two genders and God created man to his own image, male and female, he created. Well, we have his own image. We have he created. He. He is a pronoun. So even God has pronouns, my dude. God, God uses pronouns. Pronouns are an offense to all who believe in God. Pronouns mock God's creation. Do not mock God. Reject evil. Dude, I think if you didn't use any pronouns at all, you'd be mocking God because God clearly has pronouns. It says right here, he created. You even said don't use them. By your own logic, you're being anti-Christian because you've used multiple pronouns in this very tweet. So fun fact, if we go back to Laverne Spicer, after she said there are no pronouns in the constitution, she then followed it up with, there are no pronouns in the Bible. <laughs> so I decided to pull up some verses from the Bible to check if that's true. Are there really no pronouns in the Bible? Let's find out. Now I'm not particularly religious, so I don't know everything biblical. This is Isaiah 46. This is from the MIT website. I don't have a Bible on hand. I guess that makes me a bad Christian. I'm not even a Christian. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Here we go. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all you who remain in the house of Israel, you whom I have upheld since you were conceived and have carried since your birth. Well, okay, first of all, we have since you were conceived, you, whom, we got a lot of pronouns already. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I am he. I'm sorry, this is not just using pronouns, this is someone introducing themselves with their pronouns. I am he. Okay, so this this person, you would refer to this person as he. You'd refer to him as he, because he says right here, I am he. Wow, it's almost like that's the purpose of a fucking pronoun. Down here, God says, I am God, there is no other. I am God, there is none like me. So not only is there he, but God is also saying, I am God. God is saying, there is none like me. What types of words are I and me? What kind of words are those? Say my name. There are lots of pronouns in the Bible, actually. The Bi Bible's full of pronouns. The Bible's just binders full of pronouns. That's all the Bible is. <laughs> Laverne Spicer continues by saying, pronouns are a modern phenomenon spread by ego, and that's it. Laverne, what word did you end that tweet with? And that's it. What kind of word is it? What kind of word is it? I don't know, Laverne, what kind of word is it? Who's it? All right, so someone from an account called Heterosexuals for LGB Rights, sure, Jan, said, only trans rights activists have pronouns. And then someone replied saying, so do you refer to yourself solely in the third person by your proper name? You never use pronouns. And this person replied saying, no, as a woman, a female, a daughter of Eve. Well, based on this so far, maybe this person actually doesn't use pronouns. They're like, they don't even say I. I'm trying to think of how they would say this. Woman refers to woman self as female. <laughs> like, that's how this person talks so far. That's, maybe. So then this person replied and said, so you use she, her pronouns? And this person says, no, I don't have pronouns. They are SJW PC fodder. Well, okay, you literally just said I. So clearly you do use pronouns. You just use the pronoun. You use the word I. So then this person responds, so once again, do you always refer to yourself in third person by your proper name? And they said, no. And so then they said, so you do use pronouns in other words. And they said, I do not use pronouns. You started that sentence with the pronoun. I, the, the absolute irony of I do not use pronouns. That's like if I'm talking to you and I said, I am not talking right now. That is objectively false because in order to say the words, I am not talking right now, I was talking right then to say them. <laughs> it's like when someone says, I'm always lying. Does it mean you're lying in the moment when you said you're always lying too? Like, it's one of those like logic puzzles it almost feels like. The phrase, I do not use pronouns is inherently a paradox. You said, I, right there. Yes, you do. 
This person says, so you never use words such as she or her, which again means that you must refer to yourself solely in the third person by your proper name. And straight Karen over here says, I use she, but I have never used a pronoun in my life. What, what do you think? A pro this is my question. What do people think a pronoun is? I'm very confused at this point. I like this response. So someone said, pronouns are what's between your legs. No. How can pronouns be what's between your legs? How does that make sense? Pronouns are a part of speech. Are adjectives between my legs too? Are adverbs between my legs? How does that make any sense? But I think this person had a good response saying, if this is the case, then my pronouns are your mom. That's how I would have responded to. No, that's not true. I, w I would have been too much of a nerd. I have two forms, and that is linguistic nerd and actively having sex with all your moms. There's no in between. So those are my two forms. Laverne Spicer, once again, this woman, I don't know what her deal with making it a point of pride that she doesn't understand pronouns is, but okay. She says, I always speak my mind and I think y'all have lost your minds when you got the vice president introducing herself with pronouns. I have never used a pronoun in my life, nor do I go around calling people Philippine X or Latin X. Y'all went so woke, your brains went and fell asleep. And then shout out to this guy who circled her use of pronouns in this, including words like I and you. I like how she says the vice president introducing herself with pronouns. Well, yeah, you also just introduced the vice president with pronouns because the antecedent was vice president and the pronoun in that sentence was herself. And you referred to it that herself was how you introduced it. You introduced the vice president with pronouns, Laverne. You did that. Anyway, I'm on Twitter too. Do I have pronouns in my bio? Yes, but they're in Polish, so... Have fun with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit of a shorter one today, but I wanted to do a reaction to some of the absolutely weirdest shit I see on the internet with people claiming that pronouns are some like political statement when they're not, they're a part of speech. They're already baked into the way that we use language. And when somebody is introducing their pronouns to you, if they're saying like, hi, my name is Savvy. And then someone says, do you want me to call you she? And I say, yes, call me she. That sense of a pronoun, it's the same way that you, you introduce your name and your name is a proper noun. And then if someone tells you the pronouns they want to be referred to as, those are pronouns. They're still the same parts of speech. Me introducing myself to you with my name does not mean that all nouns are about ego. Because if I say, hi, my name is Savvy. Savvy is a proper noun, isn't it? It's my name in that sentence, right? It's functioning as a noun. But that doesn't mean that because I tell you what I want you to address me as, that means that the entire linguistic category of nouns is all suddenly about ego or about the LGBT movement because Savvy is a LGBTQ woman and she introduced herself with a proper noun which was her name. Do you see how ridiculous this gets when you take it so far? So anyway, there are a lot of people out here, like I see classically Abby talking about like, oh, we're normalizing low academic achievement by saying pronouns when we introduce ourselves. And it's like, no, dude, people who get so up in arms about pronouns as a concept, you guys are the ones normalizing low academic achievement because you're over here completely showing a lack of understanding of how basic sentences are broken down and what people actually mean when they're saying the word pronoun which is in itself a noun. I don't know. What do you guys think of all this? Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully this helped you on your college English paper. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Either way, I'll see you guys again later this week for more videos. But in the meantime, keep supporting small businesses. Have a great start to your day. Bye. Get you some nuts. Yeah, you effin'. Up yours, woke moralist. We'll see who cancels who.